So, what's your name? My name is Kevin Bates. And you're working for IBM? Yes, I work out of the uh, San Francisco office, the uh, Center for Data Source, Open Data and AI Technologies, or okay. CODAY. Okay, that's a new one, no? Yeah, we got rebranded about three months ago from okay. the Spark Technology Center. Okay, what was the reason? Uh, I think uh, to to kind of get more in line with where the technology is going with data science and okay. analytics. Okay. Um, so Spark is, uh, while a big part, it's still, you know, it, there's also other things, application or uh, artificial intelligence and things like mm -hmm. that are coming in. Okay. So what are the main contributions of the Cordea Center? Um, well, we, we've got expertise in the Spark uh, areas, uh, mm -hmm. especially Spark SQL. Mm -hmm. um, we also have uh, some folks working on the Fiddle project, which is okay. the fabric for data learning. Okay. And that's a new open source project that we're okay. really excited about. And then um, my colleagues work on uh, Jupyter Enterprise Gateway, which okay. is an extension to the Jupyter stack okay. um, to allow uh, distribution of kernels across a compute cluster, okay. which you don't get for free in, the, in today's Jupyter yeah. Can framework. you tell me more about this? Yeah, sure. So um, about 18 months ago, mm -hmm. we had a, a few groups at IBM that had all embraced the Spark technology, mm -hmm. and they wanted to bring notebooks to their, to their environment. And uh, we found that in this kind of environment, you have a, a large compute cluster mm -hmm. that you want to you wanna keep your data scientists off of that, those resources. You, you would rather have their notebooks running on their desktops. Okay. And so um, one step to that um, that we, we really thought was a good fit was Jupyter Kernel Gateway, which essentially splits the notebook in half, okay. where the notebook process runs on the desktop, mm -hmm. and then the kernel management of the notebook server is actually proxied to a gateway server. Okay. But that's still bounded by the, the Jupyter Framework's design of kernels are always local to their launcher or to mm -hmm. where, whatever process launches okay. them. So even with Jupyter Kernel Gateway, all of the kernels that would be launched in the compute cluster, so we've isolated the, the notebooks over to the data scientist's desktop, mm -hmm. but we still have the resource allocation issue and the, the constraints that that involves because the kernels are still running on the, on the gateway node. Okay. And so um, we, we felt, okay, if, if, we're gonna, if these groups need an enterprise solution for their technologies, we should go a step further and really look into how we can distribute the kernels, which end up being the Spark drivers of an mm -hmm. application, mm -hmm. um, how we can distribute those Spark drivers across the compute cluster. And okay. so we came up with Jupyter <laughs> Enterprise Gateway, which is an interesting story there because should we extend kernel gateway in the open source or should, should we create a new open source project? Okay. And we felt that uh, due to time to market constraints of these other groups at IBM, that it would behoove us to, to go the route of creating a new open source project that is a direct extension of an existing open source project, but alleviates us with some of the, the politics that might be involved with extending an existing project. Mm -hmm. um, and we can then later down the road at, to see how this all unfolds, talk about merging these two projects mm. together because mm. really Enterprise Gateway is just an extension of Kernel Gateway. Okay, so initially this, this was due to a client need actually? Yes, an internal okay. client, but a client okay. nonetheless. We, okay. we treat all of our uh, internal products and external products as clients okay. and uh, we, they are our first priority. Okay, is it something which we sell to our customers? Yes, we, okay. we, we package we would package the notebook platform okay. as part of the solution. Um, we originally started out in January of uh, 2017, okay. and, and we were using Kernel Gateway then okay. and realized that wasn't a, a good solution, but we were also targeting our uh, IBM Open Platform product, the okay. IOP product. Okay. Then in summer of 2017, we, we introduced a, a relationship with Hortonworks. Uh -huh. And the HDP platform became the target platform, okay. and that's that's really what we target today in, in Enterprise Gateway. So okay. if you were to pull the Enterprise Gateway code, you would get uh, kernel specs and solutions targeting Hortonworks data platform ah, out of the I box. See. Okay, um, and then you're free to t 
to adjust those examples. We, we like to refer to them as example kernel specs, but okay. they should work right out of the box okay. if, if you were to lay it down. Is that related to what's in studio and data science experience local somehow? Yes, the, the uh, IBM or Analytics Engine, IAE, okay. is, is using our product. And I believe ah, okay. uh, Watson Studio uses them for one of their solutions. Yeah, that's, that, that's true. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, I see. Okay. Good. Uh, now I think it's time to have a pizza. <laughs> <laughs> you can have your beer. All right. So, yeah. Um, so this whole remoting of, of kernels, um, the, the architecture that we came up with has, has really proven itself out um, okay. because we, we, we developed a, a pluggable architecture. Mm -hmm. So really what you're plugging in is what we call a process proxy. Okay. And it's really, a pro we've, we've abstracted the kernel processing that Jupyter provides as a base framework. We've abstracted it out and made it pluggable. Okay, so it's, you're wrap, wrapping the, the kernel. The, well, we wrap the kernel, but also the, the kernel management okay. functionality inside of Jupyter. Oh, so okay. before we even launch the kernel uh -huh. is also uh, abstracted. Okay. And so you, what you do is you implement you know, three or four methods, and mm -hmm. it's, on, it's on our repository, mm -hmm. um, uh, that are tuned to the resource manager that you're trying to adopt to. So, for example, for yarn, we are our yarn process proxy. Our we call it the yarn cluster process proxy because everything's run in cluster mode. Mm -hmm. um, actually, uses the the yarn API to go and discover uh, and and be able to take status of the application using the application ID. So it goes and discovers what the application ID is mm -hmm. for the kernel that just got launched. Okay. Now. The, the wrapper of mm -hmm. the kernel, we also wrap the kernels mm -hmm. in what we call kernel launchers. Okay. And so the kernel launcher is, is a, a thin shell around the kernel mm -hmm. and, um, and it, it does two things. It, it creates the, the, um, the connection file that's using just pure Jupyter code. Mm -hmm. um, it creates the connection file and passes that to the kernel, but it also passes that connection information back to the gateway server. Okay. So when we launch a launcher, we pass it a return address, a okay. response address, we call okay. it. And it sends the, the JSON payload of all that connection information that's part of the Jupyter framework in, in that uh, response address socket back to the gateway. And then we just start talking to the kernel just like Jupyter would. In fact, we, we push it down to the Jupyter framework. And from then on, Jupyter is just talking to that kernel, but it's on a remote host. Which so Jupyter doesn't even notice that it's Jupyter doesn't know that it, it's just a, it's talking to okay. sockets at that point. Okay. And those sockets happen to be going across the network. Okay. So you mentioned Jan. What about Mesos, Kubernetes? Right. So uh, we've got uh, process proxies developed right now for Yarn, mm -hmm. IBM Spectrum Conductor. Okay. Um, which was developed by one of their engineers. So, okay. so that was great because it's essentially a third-party contribution uh -huh. to the repository. Okay. And then we've also got a Kubernetes implementation okay. that we're hoping to get released sometime in Q3 or Q4 of this year. Okay. Um, we don't have a Mesos uh, process proxy. We'd love to have that contrib contribution made. Okay, or so Mesos guys, you can <laughs> contribute to the project. Just check out the link below in the video. <laughs> yeah, and uh, that would be great. We'd, we'd love to have contributors uh, mm -hmm. join us, and uh, we're really excited about where this is heading. Mm -hmm. um, and it, we we think it, it can really leverage the whole compute cluster um, over the over the time. Okay, so the, the, this kernel stuff is now scaling linearly because of Jan, no? Correct. What about the enterprise gateway itself? It's, isn't that a bottleneck now? Well, it's it, it's a bit of a bottleneck. It's really lightweight, but we do have um, we have uh, something on our roadmap uh -huh. that we've already implemented at a file level called session persistence. Okay. And so what session persistence does is it when a when a kernel is started, it writes all the information that it would need to re-hook itself to that kernel into a right now it's a file, but we want to use a NoSQL database okay. or something that can be HA'd itself. Okay. And um, and then if that gateway server were to come down, another one could start up. And when we start up, we go look for that information. And if it was a file, and if we had an NFS mount, 
Today, you could even, the, the next gateway server could come up and it'll go and recognize that, oh, I've got some in-use kernels. Okay. Let me go and connect these uh, connect to these ports and um, and okay. Oh, start you can use Zookeeper, no? That's maybe yeah, already I, there and went for that. The Texas. Oh, protocol. great! Yeah. Uh, I don't know anything about Zookeeper, oh, but let's, my let's, colleagues, uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. Let's talk about it later. Yeah. Okay. That'd be great. Cool. Okay. That means we are getting back to beer and pizza. <laughs> and thanks a lot for the interview. Oh, and thank thanks you. a lot for watching. Bye.